service. Y'all look hungry, so I'll be quick. Uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Uh, Carlin, you know, if confirmed, you will be responsible for missile defense review, uh, a subtask of the Global Force Posture Review. China has rapidly expanded their long-range strike capabilities for two years in a row. The Indo-PACOM commander's number one unfunded, unfunded priority has been a missile defense system for Guam. Uh, do you believe that in order for our military to properly pivot Indo-Pacific, that we need a defense system on Guam to defend against advanced Chinese cruise ballistic missiles. Senator, Guam is a key operating location for the U.S. Department of Defense, and we need to ensure that it is appropriately protected. While I haven't dug into the classified details behind this issue, if I am confirmed, I can promise you it would be a priority of mine. Thank you. Do you believe the missile defense architecture to defend Guam should include a variety of capabilities, including the 360-degree sensor coverage and a wide range of tools to defeat ballistic crews and hypersonic missiles? Senator, while I can't speak to specific platforms since I'm not privy to the classified information, I do think the need for such a capability, ensuring Guam is appropriately protected, is absolutely important. With these two Indo-PACOM uh, commanders warning the Aegis Ashore system to defend Guam, do you, do you agree with their assessment? Uh, I haven't read the classified information behind this one either, sir. Uh, that said, I think we need analog analytically rigorous and operationally effective capabilities to ensure that our military can do what it needs in this key region. You've got a lot of reading to do. Indeed, sir. <laughs> uh, Mr. Cenares, uh 300 million young men and women, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, capabilities of, of uh, being in our military to defend this great country. We were recently told only 450,000 of those 30 million were capable and qualified to be in our military. How are we going to overcome that? Well, Senator, I, there's a, a lot of issues that kind of go in with that. I, and one of the issues uh, that we don't really have a lot of it, it's physical fitness. Uh, a lot of these young men and women uh, aren't don't meet the standards. Um, it's important that we maintain these high standards. Uh, we want the best and the brightest to be able to recruit the best and the brightest. Uh, I know you know a little bit about recruiting. And, um, you know, if confirmed, uh, definitely recruiting and retention, because I believe you can't talk about recruiting without also talking about retention, because we want to recruit the best and the brightest, but we also want to make sure that we maintain them, their skills and the knowledge that uh, we, we give them. And so um, I am committed, uh, if confirmed, uh, to do what we can to, to help our services uh, in their recruiting efforts to make sure that we can do the best that we can to get the best and the brightest. We just need, we cannot drop our qualifications. You know, I keep hearing our commanders and people that come in front of this committee say that, you know, we're changing some standards that they have to go through. Instead of running two miles, they just have to walk one mile. I can't believe that the United States of America would drop its qualifications, especially for what's so important, our military. And so uh, in our education system, only half the kids in this country can read over the sixth grade and reading level. That's embarrassing. And uh, we, we'd hate to send them to the military to have to learn to read uh, after coming out of high school. So we got a lot of work to do. Yeah, Senator, I, I agree. I believe it's important for us to, to maintain our uh, high standards in the military and uh, Confirmed, I will work with our, our different services to ensure that we do that. Uh, Mr. Del Toro, thank you for your service. Uh, I think you're going to be great in this position uh, as former Aegis Destroyer Commander. Uh, you've got the qualifications. Uh, we all know that China is a, a huge threat. Uh, who's going to be our most important allies uh, around China for us to follow upon? Senator, that's a marvelous question, and there are going to be many allies. Um, we have many allies and partners right now in the Indo-Pacific theater, and we need to continue to strengthen those alliances and those partnerships more so as we advance our troops and our logistics into the Indo-Pacific theater. It's important to respect each and every one of them and respect their concerns as well, too, and to work very collaboratively with them, uh, diplomatically, economically, and militarily as well, so that we can present uh, uh, a really combined uh, deterrence to China and, and how China wants to accomplish its economic goals around the globe. Yeah, as we've talked, our allies are one of our most, our biggest asset. You know, Absolutely. Other than the men and women that fight in our military, and we need to continue to build, especially for China. They don't have a lot. They don't have a lot of friends. We do, and we need to count on those friends. So we we hope that you would build on that. 
Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Senator Tuberville.